Hello everybody and welcome back to Ready Steady DIY. This week I'm going straight down the Atari rabbit hole. <laughs> I acquired a bunch of video games that look like this. And I'm going to try to fix them up and make them look like this. If you want to see how I did it, stick around to the end. There's a lot to do today, so let's get going. So yes, I like vintage 8-bit video games. I think they're a really great cost-effective way to have some fun. I love the design on the cartridges. I love the design of the games. I know some people look at the graphics or hear the music and they go, what? Why would you like that? But let's face it, you don't sit down on poker night, look at the cards and go, man, the resolution on these things is terrible. I can't play poker with you guys. In the end, fun is fun. And I feel like inside an Atari 2600 or 7800 or Famicom or a Nintendo NES, there's just like a lot of fun. It's just waiting. These games were designed to be difficult because they're based on arcade games. And the whole plan was to take your quarters away. If it was easy, you'd be there all day. So unlike some modern video games, older video games tend to just move a little quicker. Yes, they're repetitive. Yes, the graphics are what they are. Yes, the music is what it is. But I like all of that. I think it's really interesting to see how the video game designers created graphics and music with very few resources. I, I like watching how they figured out what would work and what doesn't work in a game. And I love just sort of looking at my collection of cartridges. I leave them out on display like, I don't know, I'm not, a, I'm not embarrassed. <laughs> I just think the, the fonts and the images are so cool and I have fun playing. So occasionally I find myself on Kijiji and I found this, 12 Atari games all look like they fought some kind of battle. <laughs> Mud, guck, damage labels, you name it. I looked at that ad and I said, there's something I am never buying. <laughs> but it just sort of sat there because who's gonna buy that? I don't think you should ever pay that much for an Atari game. There were millions of them made. Everybody keeps them in a box in their attic somewhere. It's not hard to go to a flea market or a garage sale and find them for a couple of bucks. I think that's money well spent. In this case, it just seemed too crazy. I didn't feel like the effort would be worth what I would get back, but one game sort of stood out for me. There was Time Pilot amidst all of them. And I don't have a copy of Time Pilot and it's my girlfriend's favorite. So I sort of left it sitting on Kijiji and I would go back every couple of weeks and it would still be sitting there and a couple more weeks would go by and it would still be sitting there. In the end, I finally just contacted the people and said, look, I don't think anybody's gonna take these and I'm afraid you're gonna throw them in the landfill. So before you do that, will you just let me know? And they said, look, if you're gonna take them, we'll drive them to you. <laughs> so I took them. Now I'm the proud owner of 12 totally disgusting Atari games. Yay! <laughs> but there's hope. Atari games are pretty robust. There's not a lot of delicate electronics in them. What is delicate is encased in plastic. So as long as you've got a little bit of knowledge about how they work, you can usually save a cartridge. It's not always the case, but it's the case most of the time. So uh, obviously the labels were trash and there wasn't a lot of hope for saving those. Luckily, I know a supplier who prints new labels. I didn't feel badly about changing the labels out. Some people really feel like if you're restoring something, it all has to be original and you can't mess with it. And <clears throat> if the label's damaged, it's part of the story of the cartridge and all that kind of stuff. I respect that. In this case, I didn't feel that was warranted. These weren't rare games. These weren't really special games. I just wanted to play them. So I thought, well, you know, if after I clean them up, and some of them seem to function, I'm gonna give them new labels. They've made it this far, like 40 years. They deserve new labels. Or at least that was my thinking. So the first step was just to uh, try to clean them up so I could touch them. <laughs> Once that was all done and they were sort of more presentable, I needed to inspect them. So you wanna look at the contacts of the cartridge, the part that goes into the video game console. And you also wanna look at the housing and see has it been dropped? Are there big gouges? Are there cracks? In this case, all of these cartridges had no cracks and most of the contacts looked pretty reasonable. There's hope yet. I asked the people I got these from if they knew anything about their history. They said they didn't know anything, that they had found them during a renovation. Unfortunately, after they found them, they hit them with a power washer. So I wasn't totally sure what to make of that, but I knew that a game could actually withstand that. So I wasn't totally disheartened. And so I moved on to the next step. The next step is open the cartridge up. I decided to focus on Time Pilot because that's the one that was most important to me. In the case of a Coleco cartridge, it's actually pretty easy. 
Under the label, there are two screws. If you just remove those screws, the cartridge comes apart. So I opened it up and it was pretty gross. But luckily on the inside of the cartridge, where all the electronics are, looked reasonably clean. So I pulled out the PCB itself and put it aside. Next step was just soak the plastic parts. There's two posts, a couple of springs, the front and the back of the cartridge. I let it soak to sort of get all the dirt out. And once that was done, the next step was to try to refurbish some of the white plastic. White plastic responds really well if you brush it with a toothbrush and some baking soda. So I started doing that and noticed the white of the plastic was starting to come back, looking good. I wanted to clean the label up a bit, but I wanted to leave most of it on because I needed to test the cartridge before I ordered a new label. No point in ordering a new label if the whole game's dead. So I left the label on and moved over to the PCB. The PCB is the game. It's, uh, in this case, it's actually more complex than most Atari games. A lot of Atari games just have a little blob and the electronics are sort of underneath it. You can't even see them. In this case, you could see all the solder points were good and it just needed a little cleaning. The contacts are the important part. That's where the game makes contact with the console. And if they're dirty or corroded, the game might not play. So I use some contact cleaner to clean those up. I prefer Deoxit D5. I use that for most of my vintage audio gear. It's really great for switches. I thought it would work well for Atari 2. The thing with Deoxit that makes it different from a contact cleaner like you might buy for the electronics in your car is that it has a little lubricant in the formula. So after it's done cleaning corrosion or whatever dirt might be on the contact, it leaves behind a little lubricant. And since the Atari game jams into the console by design, I thought a little lubricant might kind of be worth it. I thought it might elongate the life of the contacts of the game and also be good for the insides of the cartridge receiver in the console. Deoxit D5 is more expensive than other contact cleaners, but I think it's worth it. So after cleaning off the contacts, the PCB was looking pretty good. I pulled the plastic parts of the cartridge out of their bath, rinsed them off, dried them off, put the whole thing back together. At this point, I had to test the game. In the end, the game worked. 40 years old, lived in a wall or under a stairs or something, got hit with a power washer, and the thing still works. Awesome. One thing I really like about Atari games is that they're this hardy. You almost know when you see one at a garage sale or at a thrift store, it's likely gonna work. It may need a little help, but it's likely gonna work. So now I had a game that looked pretty good. It was reasonably clean. It played just fine. I was confident putting it into my Atari, but I wanted a new label. And so I ordered one, but it was gonna take a few weeks. But once the label arrived, it was pretty exciting. It was a really good replica, very close to the original. So now I had to take the game apart again, which is easy to do because the screws are still exposed. And then pulling the screws out, I could remove the top of the cartridge. And now I had to take the old label off entirely. The tricky part with Atari labels is that they're put on with a kind of glue that after 40 years tends to dry up like concrete. Atari cartridges that have been stored inside at room temperature in a dust-free environment, like, I don't know, a shoebox or something, Thin, those are going to have softer glue and you're going to have an easier time removing those. But Atari cartridges that have been stored somehow under some stairs or in a wall only to be discovered during a home renovation and then power washed and then kept God knows where, those Atari cartridges are going to have hermetically sealed glue on the back of their old labels. It's pretty tough to get that off. I asked around, I did a lot of research. The going theory is that it's probably an acrylic glue that's on the back of these labels. I wasn't sure what would be the right solvent for that. A lot of people use Goo Gone. I tried a bunch of solvents. And then on a whim, I don't know if you've seen my video about this, there's a product called Shoe Laundry, which is kind of like a mousse that's designed to clean your shoes. And it did a really good job on some pretty hard stains on my shoes. I'll leave a link if you want to watch that video. I don't know if you're into video games, maybe you're also into shoes. But anyway, on a whim, I just sprayed some of that cleaning mousse on top of the label, spread it around, put it into some water to soak, and most of the label came off. Any little remnants that didn't come off, I was able to remove with the help of a little 2000 grit sandpaper dipped into the same solution that I soaked the cartridge in. I was worried at first, but this ended up not hurting the plastic one bit. The grit of the sandpaper is so fine, the plastic was totally fine. 2000 grit sandpaper is meant for finishing up paint jobs on cars. I guess it works for plastic too. So then after making sure my cartridge was totally clean, dried it off, made sure it was at room temperature, made sure the label was at room temperature, everything is clean and ready to go. I got a little rag and started applying the label. When you apply any label to a video game, heck, when you apply any label to anything, you wanna get it on straight. So you start by peeling the backing off the label just a little bit. You line up two corners and make sure it's as straight as possible. The tricky part is, you can fool yourself. A small little variance here is gonna have an exponential effect on the other end of the label. If you're a little off square at the top and you don't notice, by the time you finish applying the label, the bottom's gonna be way off. You wanna be really sure to get the top of the label square. After I was sure, I tamped down the label and used my rag 
moving side to side to push out any air bubbles. And then I pulled a little bit more of the label backing off and then adhered it to the cartridge by moving my rag left and right. And I continued in that manner, reveal a little bit more, push a little more down, reveal a little bit more, push a little more down until I got to the very bottom, wrapped the end around, and luckily it fit perfectly. So now I have an old video game that works and looks kind of like a new video game. The game itself cost me nothing. I had the stuff to clean it already. The label was only a few dollars. This was pretty cost effective and it's a really fun game. And I kept some stuff at a landfill. I think vintage 8-bit gaming is a really good investment. I'm not kidding. It's not hooked up to the internet. Nobody's trying to mine your data or talk to you. <laughs> There's no networking at all. You just go, you play, you finish, you turn it off. It's kind of gloriously simple. Anyway, it's not for everybody, but hopefully this video had some value for you, even if you're not a video game person. At some point or another, you may need to attach a label to something, or you may need to clean some contacts. So hopefully there was something in this video for you and your stuff. If there was, please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe. That'd be awesome. Even if you don't, please feel free to leave a comment. Comments help me make the channel better, and that's what I'm after. See you next week, everybody.